I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And what I'd like you to learn today is, what's a drone race like? And if you're one of my regular viewers, you probably already know what a drone race is like. But let's not forget, there's always new people coming in. People maybe who haven't been to a race because they don't have a large community in their area. Or just people who are just getting into the hobby and want to see what a day at a drone race is like. How is it set up? How do we set up our... Somebody asked me about this. How do you set up your workstations? How's every, what kind of gear does everybody bring? That's what this video is going to be about. And the first thing to do for a drone race is to set up the course. And um, my strategy is usually to show up uh, about an hour late and hope that everyone has already set up. But today we're running about an hour late, so I have failed at that. Setting up the course, of course, requires that somebody come up with the course. And it's always good to have somebody who's an experienced racer or experienced maybe even course designer, if that's a thing, who can make a course that's interesting to fly, that's challenging, but not too challenging. If everybody crashes out, then that's not fun. If you don't know about setting up a course, take a look at the MultiGP Ultimate Time Trial. UTT. They are some preset courses designed by guys who really know what they're doing. They're easy to set up. They require minimal, just four or five gates each one, and you can just use those. You can also look online for courses like, you know, the regional courses or whatever, but a lot of the courses you see posted are pretty challenging. They're like nationals or regional level courses, and they're going to be too much for you. Of course, you can always just set a couple gates in a field and fly through them. It's not rocket science. Now, you're probably wondering, where do I get gates from? If I want to race, I need to set up gates. Where do they? Where do I get them? I'm going to put some links down in the video description to videos showing how to make race gates. Uh, we make them out of PVC, uh, PVC pipe, and it's really good because it's cheapish. It's strong, but it's not so strong. If you make them like out of metal, you're going to destroy your quad every time you crash into them. You got to spend a little bit of money, but once you got them, they last pretty well. If you have a little bit more money, you can. Uh, you can get some fancy flags and stuff, but that's absolutely not required. Nathan, what's, what is the best advice for someone who's going to their first race? One piece of advice. Everybody else crashes too. And when you're at a race, there is one thing that you must never do. And that is you must never plug in your quad when you don't have permission from whoever is managing the channels. There needs to be somebody managing the channels in use of the race. Uh, and the reason for that is that if two people power up and they're on the same or nearby channels, they will knock each other out of the air. And nothing's more frustrating than flying a race course and then suddenly you see somebody else's video in the pits and you crash your quad, maybe even lose your quad, crash it in a tree, dump it in a lake. It's terrible. So never, never plug in unless you have permission from whoever is managing the channels. And basically you want one pilot on each channel. You know what? I have a whole video about FPV best practices. Link in the video description. But just don't plug in until the guy who's running it tells you it's okay to plug in. And normally what you'll do at a race is you'll have a dedicated pilot station with seats for the pilots who are going in a given heat. This is a little bit more informal and we're all just kind of sitting in a row. Having a dedicated pilot station helps if you, helps you know whose turn it is to go and goes back to that advice of don't plug in your quad when it's not your turn. If you're not at the pilot station, don't plug in. And if you are at the pilot station, then it's your turn to go. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is that the race director is going to take you on a track walk. And that's your chance to learn the layout of the track. Now, if you are serious about this and you, will, you might have prepared for the race, but if you just, uh, you know, just, uh, just showed up and like, oh, let's race. This is your chance to learn the, the tr track. I also would suggest that if there are multiple heats and you're not familiar with the track, get into the second heat so you can watch the pilots in your goggles and start to learn what the track looks like. You know, walking it's fine, but seeing it in the goggles, that there's no substitute for that. All righty. Uh, this is, I think, called the Australian UGT course. Sort of. We didn't measure it out exactly perfectly, but it'll work. Start finish line heading this way towards us right now. Go around the left of the first flag. So this ends up being a kind of long sweeping turn. And then the left of this flag. I'm going to pay attention and stop recording so I can learn the course. Jeff, What's if, you, if you gave one piece of advice to someone going to their first race, what would it be? 
Don't plug in in the pits. Okay. Uh, make sure you're set to the right frequency and power level. Those are the number one things. <laughs> Great. Now the race will usually start with some practice heats and there may be two, three, four, or even five practice heats. And that's just to give pilots a chance to get warmed up, feel out the track and figure out, you know, how best to run the track. After the practice heats, there will be qualifying. That's how it's typically done. And the way qualifying works, at least in the multi-GP race format is, you'll say two minutes and it's the most laps within two minutes. So you'll hear people saying, oh, he's on a six lap pace, a five lap pace. And the goal is to the pilot with the most laps and then the fastest time on the last lap then goes into a higher position in the finals, semifinals, and so on. The bottom line is that the race director will tell you the exact format that's being used in that day. Don't stress about it, especially if it's your first race. Don't stress, just get out there, try not to crash. Don't push too hard to get fast times to crash out and just then just be sitting there doing nothing. Just get out there, feel it out, eventually you'll get competitive. So for each heat, the pilots who are gonna go on that heat will go down and set up. The race director will That's say great. who they are. They'll take them. their quads down, they'll <laughs> plug in. <laughs> and this will be the only place they plug in their quads to keep from knocking people out of the air. Inject. Both of them. Splitter. Right here All right, right, gentlemen, arm your quads. Go on the tone. Now, the general format for starting a race is that the race director will call uh, pilots ready, and all the pilots will like hold their thumbs up in the air, indicating that they have good, clean video and they are ready to start the race. Then the race director will say, arm your quads, and everyone will arm, and then the race director will say, in less than five. And then a random one to zero to five second countdown will start. And the idea of the random countdown is that you don't want people learning to kind of anticipate the gun and jump the gun. With a random gives everybody a fair chance at the start. Now, since we're using a computer to do our lap timing, it just, he doesn't say in less than five, he just says go on the tone and it randomly starts it. But if you're doing it by hand, you just say in less than five, then you just pick a number and when you hit that number, you can say go and everybody goes. Now I confess, I show up at these races woefully underprepared. I just grab a random quad and I decide to race it and I'm usually not used to the race rates. I think it's a great idea to run low rates if you're racing. 300 to 400 degrees per second is fine and gives you a lot more precision and a lot more control. But for freestyle, I'm usually running much higher rates, like 1,000 degrees per second. So if I were a more prepared person, I would be practicing and be familiar with my quad, but instead I have to use my practice heats just to get used to my quad. How much up tilt do I have? How, what are my rates? So that first lap is basically, I'm just feeling out the course. I'm not even trying to go fast. I just want to get a sense for what the course layout is like and how my quad is flying. You were like, it was like it. Like. I've been in the military and everything, and <laughs> I feel like it, I honestly feel like I'm in the Olympics. I'm not. This means nothing, but it's tough. <laughs> yeah, you had, the, you had the jitters. You yeah. had the jittery fingers. I mean, I'm still like my knees. Like I need to sit. I'm gonna sit now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It does. It really. It, this means absolutely nothing. No, no. I'm saying it doesn't matter how inconsequential the race is. When you first do it, you freak out like your life's on the line. I've never been so stressed <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Don't get stressed. Don't freak out. Just relax. Focus on flying your laps. You're probably going to get stressed and freak out. Your hands are going to be shaky. It's cool. It all, well, you'll get through it. Nate, how do you not? How do you deal with nervousness? Get the race, man. You either crash or you don't. So here's the mistake that I'm making. I'm trying to just sort of go fast now. I, I tried to go fast there. But I'm not really thinking about my lines. Do you notice those last two turns? They're these real sharp turns, and I'm just I'm going through the slalom as fast as I can and not thinking ahead to the fact that I got this sharp, two sharp turns coming up, and as a result, I'm always overshooting them. And what you see me doing is instead of making a sharp right turn, I'm kind of making a 270 degree left turn, and that's not the fastest way to do it, and my times are reflecting it. I gotta think about the whole course and how to find lines that make me efficient across the whole course. And that may mean taking the slalom a little bit slower, but then being faster through the last two turns. Let's see if I can actually put that into practice. If you had to give advice to somebody who is running their first race as a race director, what's the one piece of advice you would give them? Put faces to names 
yeah, it's good to be able to find people. If you got to holler at them specifically, make sure that they're ready, you know, that kind of thing. Getting people involved and getting them there. Promote your event so you can get it out there so people know to show up. Um, that's the main thing. If they don't know about it, they can't make it. Now that we're going into qualifying, we're starting to do something called spotting. And what that means is that for every pilot who's racing, there's another pilot sitting next to him on his channel in the goggles watching him. If he misses a gate or if he takes the wrong path through the course, or anything like that goes wrong, that pilot is gonna let him know. The spotter will also be responsible for counting laps and qualifying the way, the format we use, the number of laps you do in qualifying is what matters and the, the spotter will count laps so the pilot, get that out of the way, so the pilot can focus on racing. Typically the way it's done is that in heat number one, the pilots from heat number two will spot for them since they're all on the same channel. So you'll have somebody who's on race band channel one and heat one and in race band channel one and heat two and it's an easy way you just spot for the next pilot who am i watching what i gotta go spot so this time around i think i found a line through i'm having real trouble with the sort of spiral finding a smooth line through there but through that second half of the spiral gate i think i found a way to get into the slalom much quicker and i've also started taking the uh the second the last gate uh, directly instead of turning directly into it without having to line it up. I feel like I'm getting a little faster. I got seven laps that time, whereas until now I'd only ever gotten six. <sighs> we'll keep trying. So now qualifying's over and we go into the finals. The race director is going to redraw the brackets for the finals, going to rearrange the pilots based on how well they did in qualifying. And then pilots are going to race, and they're going to race first to four laps is the format we use. In qualifying, it's the most laps in two minutes, but in, uh, in, in finals, it's first across the line. And we use what's called a double elimination format, which means that two losses and you're eliminated. You get one unlucky lap or you crash out, you're not eliminated for one loss, but two losses and you're eliminated. And then folks, something completely unexpected happened. I actually won the race and this is the final heat of me and the second place finisher side by side. You can watch it for yourself. I got to say thank you to the two guys who were definitely faster today. They both got into an elimination round together and crashed out trying to beat each other, leaving the door wide open for me. But I'll let you watch the race here. And if you watch our footage, you can see us exchanging places. It was a really tight race. Going into the second lap, you can see I'm just about a half a second ahead of him. This is where I was struggling the most, swinging really wide through this section. But right here, I was much faster into the slalom than he was, struggling to make this right turn, ah, sharp right turn and line that up, swinging wide. Coming around here, I felt pretty fast. Again, struggling to get this clean. Yeah, way high, way high, but fast into the slalom. Cut this one tight, pretty good here. There, I just give up and do the left 270 just because I don't want to miss. I am dead on with him, and he passes me here going into the final lap, and now I'm fighting for it. I am fighting for it, and that's where I make the pass. He swings wide going into the slalom. I get it tight right here into the final gate, and... I win the race right there. I not even know I've won. Now they've told me I've won and I'm, yay, I'm going to land. He is finishing. He's continuing to race, not realizing the race is over. <laughs> that is how it goes. And that is what a quad race is like. I hope you have enjoyed this little oh, flare. No good. Sorry, J.J. Abrams. I hope you have enjoyed this little look at what a day at a drone race is like. There's, there's one more part of the drone race that I'm not going to show you, and that is where we all have to go take down the course and help pack it up. <laughs> Always stay and help tear down the race director and the people who have to take all these gates and junk home for you with them. Sure to appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. What did I leave out? What did I miss? Did that, what, is there something about a drone race you want to know? Leave it down in the comments. Happy flying.